Kennedy chose the moon. Obama has chosen Mars. In an exclusive opinion piece for CNN, the president outlined his goal to put humans on the red planet with the help of private industry. We have set a clear goal vital to the next chapter of America's story in space, sending humans to Mars by 2030s and returning them safely to Earth, with the ultimate ambition to one day remain there for an extended time. President Obama is not the first leader to target Mars. The quest to explore the planet has fascinated America and the world for more than half a century. It's waiting out there, just as it always has. What's it really like? This is Launch Complex 41, from where the Viking missions will be launched on the Titan Centaur launch vehicle. mid-2030s, I believe we can send humans to orbit Mars and return them safely to Earth. And a landing on Mars will follow, and I expect to be around to see it. Inspiring words joining me now, Michio Kaku is a physics professor at the City University of New York, and he hosts Sci-Fi Science on the Science Channel. Thanks so much for being with us. Glad to be here. 2030, sounds ambitious. Is it realistic? Well, Matt Damon, watch out. <laughs> if you saw the movie The Martian, you know that it's a very arduous trip. It takes two years for a round-trip mission to Mars. But, you know, there could be a traffic jam over mm. Mars. Three groups, not one, three groups have announced that in 15 to 20 years, they want to go to Mars. SpaceX uh, with Elon Musk, Boeing, and the United States government. Now, NASA has been criticized as being the agency to nowhere. It doesn't go anywhere anymore. That's all going to change. No, it wants to go to Mars. It, there has been some concern that while it's great to have these goals and inspiring, that maybe um, people are, are rushing too much and, and safety is an issue. We've seen so many times recently how dangerous space exploration can be. That's right. There's something called the Mars jinx. And that is that on the order of, well, 30, 40, 50 percent of the missions never reach the red planet. Mm. Now, we've been more successful because our space probes have, in fact, reached Mars with, with a certain amount of regularity. But there's dangers. There's radiation. There's weightlessness. Micrometeorite impact. Plus, Mars itself is a frozen desert. You can't live off the land. There's no vegetation, no food, no water, no air. And yet no it continues air. to fascinate us. Do we think, what, or what makes so many people believe that uh, life can be sustained or a colony can be sustained on Mars? What is it that's put that into so many minds and imaginations? You know, it's part of our psyche to look for other civilizations, other worlds in outer space. And Mars is the closest in terms of looking like the Earth. It's a rocky planet, not a gas giant like Jupiter. The temperatures are cold, but not super hot like Venus, and it is reachable with a, a two-year mission. So it's fascinating to believe that perhaps maybe there could be men from Mars. Well, now we know that we can't even find microbial life on Mars at all, but still it beckons. In fact, Elon Musk has said that we should be a multi-planet species. So in other words, we need Earth 2.0. It's simply too dangerous to put Homo sapiens on just one planet. We need an insurance policy. We've done such a good policy. job taking care of the one we're on that we should go <laughs> to other ones, I suppose. But, uh, but, but truthfully, a lot of people believe that if we don't do that, that so many things can be learned um, and can benefit life here, even in the quest, even if it is further out than 2030. Take a look at the space program. That has given us uh, miniaturized transistors, the Internet, 
so the space program with satellites, weather satellites, telecommunications, all of that is a byproduct of the space program. And, and so going, the, yeah? Sergeant Trump, but do the technological advances we see help us more in space? You know, we all wonder at the, the leaps and bounds that we've seen carrying, you know, smartphones around. We can do so much with computers. Is that helping us? make further progress into getting further into deep space? There's a synergy. The space program forced us to miniaturize electronic components and that gave birth to the electronic revolution, which in turn makes possible space probes that can go safely to the planets and that creates yet another synergy. So there's a back and forth between the space program and innovation and ingenuity. You mentioned what a long and dangerous journey it is. What is the next generation of astronaut going to have to be like if they're going to go to Mars? Well, forget the moon. The moon was a Sunday picnic. <laughs> three days to moon, three days to come back. You can do it in one week. Mars is a nine-month mission to Mars, plus you've got to be on the red planet for several months, and then another nine months going back, a two-year mission. And realize that the world's record for being up in outer space is just a little bit over a year. That's the world's record. So we've got a ways gonna, to go. Yeah, we've got a ways do, to go. Do you think the private partner government uh, relationship is, is good for everyone? I think it's going to be key because the taxpayers are saying, well, who's going to foot the bill for this mission to Mars? Private enterprise wants a piece of the action. They see a lot of spin-offs and benefits. So again, there's a synergy, I think, between the government and the taxpayer who will foot most of the bill and private enterprise because they want a piece of the action. Together we can get there, we think. Thank right. you so much for coming in. My pleasure. Appreciate it.